Well, as promised, we are taking a deep dive into Kyber 2.0, or Super Studio, as they call it. I did take a look at this when it first launched, and while I know the whole Canvas thing took a lot of people by surprise, as I've dug into it and spent some more time in Kyber space, there is definitely a lot of interesting things that you can do here. And more importantly, it opens up whole branches of aesthetics that you may not have previously considered. So buckle up and let's dive in. As always with Kyber, things are gonna get a little weird. Briefly, and in case you missed that first video, within Super Studio, we can now generate images in Flux and in Stable Diffusion 3.5, and we can generate video in Luma, Runway, Kling, Kling Pro, Minimax, and Mochi. Plus updated versions of returning favorites like Flipbook, where you could take an image and kind of kyberize it, that's the way that I always think about it, and a V4 update to video restyling, basically video to video. This was always one of my favorite features of Kyber. And of course, the big news is that we are now working in this Canvas format, or AI murder board, as someone in the comments had referred to Canvases previously. I know Canvases can be divisive, but I, I, you know, once we describe it as an AI murder board, I think it finally clicks as to why I like them. Now, I will say that now having spent some time in Super Studio, it, it is definitely much more Canvas canvassy than it is like spaghetti noodles going everywhere. And while I'm sure that people will build out some very beautiful and aesthetic uh, workflow canvases, uh, you know, you can also just be a mess like I, I am here. Uh, this looks better than my desktop in all honesty. Remember, it's not a mess if you know where everything is. So starting off with some basics, uh, all you have to do to generate an image is come up to the plus button here and use a flux image. Uh, they're calling them flows, these the little boxes. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a flux image here. So in honor of keeping it weird, we'll go with uh, something like hyper-realistic architecture photography, uh, psychedelic architecture, and some you know beautiful girl in the middle of it. You can generate in either flux 1.1 ultra, 1.1 or 1.0 will use ultra obviously uh prompt upsampling is of course you know ai prompt enhancement and you have various aspect ratios uh we always do 16 9 let's do 9 16 we never do that on the channel uh from there you just uh punch kiko the little mascot here in the face a couple of times and yeah they start generating and of course we end up with three different outputs uh each of which are pretty much what we asked for uh from here let's uh let's go ahead and generate this into some video so going back up to the flow menu um, you know, we can generate in any one of the majors. Let's do this actually in runway and in Luma. Dragging this image into the runway flow, uh, it will actually auto prompt for you, which is kind of nice. Make sure that our aspect ratio is correct and let's go punch Kiko in the face again. For the Luma side, I figured let's use the start and keyframe. So loading, you know, uh, two of the images in, it uh, once again auto prompts for us. Uh, and let's punch Kiko in the face and see what we get. On the runway side, we ended up with this as an output, which is, you know, pretty much what we expected. Luma went a little more like Hunter S. Thompson, fear and loathing on us, but again, that's what we asked for. So, so far, not too much to really write home about, but here's where I think things get really interesting and a little bit weird. So over the last couple of days, I finally got around to watching Arcane on Netflix. It is pretty good. I've never actually played League of Legends or anything, so I have no idea about that side of things, but I can tell you the animation and design is gorgeous and the story is really good too. There's definitely an underlying steampunk element to the design and that did get me thinking about, you know, cyberpunk, steampunk, uh, solar punk, all of the all of the punks. But you know what I haven't seen? Punk punk and maybe that's because it's a stupid idea. Let's find out. So starting off with a prompt of a character sheet of a female punk hero in a mix of 2D and 3D animation styles. Uh, we end up with outputs like this, which they look fine. I mean, but very kind of like standard AI generated. So here's where things get kind of interesting. When you bring in an image lab and hit this plus button, you can choose from like a static model, layout, face, and stencil. Uh, right now we're gonna take a look at aesthetic. And here we can start loading in some various reference material, such as uh, this tank girl image from one of my favorite artists, Jim Mahfood. And you don't have to stop with just one image. For example, uh, another favorite artist, James Jean, uh, dropping that in. Uh, and then running this, we end up with a pretty interesting new look. Now, is this the look that I want to go with? Well, I'm not sure yet. And that's sort of the fun of exploring with all of this stuff is just loading in different reference materials and seeing what we end up with. So yeah, it iterates a pretty good amount. Not all of them are great, but I mean, eventually I ended up honing in on at least three that I really liked. Um, like these three look pretty cool. Image Lab is really interesting. For example, taking this, uh, this is an actual photograph of uh, a subway in 
in New York in the 80s. Um, yeah, looks pretty grim in there. Uh, but loading that into Image Lab and then giving it a couple of aesthetic choices that are, you know, sort of uh, more on the mood side of things and then running that you can end up with some pretty interesting results. And actually there's a much more powerful feature within Image Lab that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. All of this material is actually available to you up in Creative Templates. Um, but you know, you can see here with this Image Lab uh, module that, you know, giving it three looks here and then three different aesthetics. Actually, well, that's the same aesthetic. Uh, let's change that out, see what happens. Um, let's just pop that over there and run it, you can end up with some pretty interesting and unexpected looks. I actually kind of like this one, so let's drag this out real quick, and then uh, you can quickly use it in another flow. So in this case, uh, let's just upscale it. So uh, yeah, instantly we have upscale V1 here. Um, you have creativity sliders, so if you want to do the whole, uh, you know, AI hallucination over it, you can. Um, let's crank it up and just see what happens. Not bad, you can definitely see it kind of gave it some sort of worn texture on the actual photograph look itself. And then uh, for sure, extra details and texture in the ground. But when you start playing around with Super Studio as a concept generator, I mean, that's where things get pretty wild. So going back to our uh, post-punk punk idea, the overall idea was to world build off of a couple of concepts, namely like, 1980s New York and punk rock, magic, retrofuturism, and, you know, authoritarianism. Initial outputs out of Flux gave us, uh, you know, pretty standard kind of like concept art looking ideas. Uh, I, I don't mind these. I think they actually look pretty cool, but they definitely lean into sort of that cyberpunk style more so than what I was necessarily looking for. So taking a couple of reference photos of Times Square from that era, yeah, it, it has definitely changed a lot and running them through Image Lab with our concept art images. While I don't think that I quite nailed this one, I do think that I ended up with kind of a stylistic look that I, I really haven't seen before. In particular, some of the nighttime stuff ended up looking pretty interesting. Using the previous method that we used to generate up this character, we can quickly fill out the roster. The way that I'm thinking about this is that these guys are like a punk rock band and when they play punk rock, they can use magic. So, you know, they fight, of course, the man. Uh, I didn't actually realize that Santa would be the leader of the authoritarian state. So here's where things get really interesting is uh, we'll take our main character here. You remember we generated her against a neutral background. We can remove that background and turn it into obviously whatever we want. I just took one of our city shots here. And then if we bring it into an image lab and add in the stencil element, uh, which you can find by hitting the plus button. And then in that stencil module, I'm gonna add in an image of the arcane character Jinx, kind of the fan favorite. Makes sense since you know this is kind of where this all started. And then I've actually found that by adding another aesthetic uh, module here and then just popping your original image back in seems to be best practice. So uh, if we run this, we end up with our character in the exact same pose. Now, to note, um, the our original character does have short, like sort of shoulder length hair. Um, and because of the way that this, the stencil feature works, it basically ends up changing it out because Jinx has this long braided ponytail. Our character now has a long braided ponytail. That just kind of is par for the course for this stencil feature. But I mean, if you're using a consistent character, um, you know, your stencil ref character will, you know, remain consistent to that character. As we can see here, there's sort of like this X leather band thing here, and we got it on our character. But we do maintain the overall stylization of our main character, and more importantly, all of her attributes. From there, you can obviously animate in Luma, Kling, Runway, or Minimax. Results, of course, as always, vary. I do want to point out that audio reactivity is back with Kyber. That's something that a lot of you have been asking for. This particular project definitely spiraled out of control for me. So uh, I was going to do like a whole title sequence with the stuff that we generated earlier. I, I kind of ran out of time for that. So so uh, I do just want to show you quickly, uh, yes, you upload an image to this. You can choose an aesthetic. Um, you know, all of the old Kyber presets are here. Lost, uh, Meteorographic, um, Meteoric Graffiti, which I always liked, uh, plus uh, some new ones as well. Upload a piece of audio. You have a number of different, you know, camera controls here as well. When you generate, you'll end up with stylistic passes that react to that audio.
speaking of title sequences, there's actually a pretty fascinating template here uh, for creating one using Luma Video's uh, start keyframe and end keyframe. Uh, basically, you know, load up a number of different images here and then utilizing first frame end frame, you can end up with a pretty interesting title sequence. I think that if you combine that along with the new flipbook and audio reactivity, uh, yeah, you can end up with something pretty cool. And with all of this, in my opinion, I'm just scratching the surface of what I think Kyber is ultimately capable of. And I do know that the team over at Kyber is definitely going hard on new features. So this is definitely not a static canvas. You know, OG Kyber always had that ever evolving look. And I think that that is definitely baked into the platform. So head over to Kyber to check it out. Uh, you can get credits for like five bucks. So, you know, it's a good way of sort of testing out and seeing if the AI murder board is something that you connect with. I think that if you spend some time with it, you might find that it does. Until next time, I thank you for watching. Keep it weird. My name is Tim.